In today's video, we are going to be talking about iodine, the importance it plays in our health, specifically our thyroid health, why a lot of us are iodine deficient, and what we can do about it if we are. Iodine is an essential mineral, critical for our health. It is found naturally in fish and seafood, seaweed, dairy products, eggs, and beef liver. It is so important, in fact, and sometimes hard to get through diet, the governments around the world have made an effort to fortify it into our food. But is this fortification enough? I'd argue no, as a lot of us are still deficient despite these efforts. Yes, this fortification has been enough to significantly reduce the rates of goiter. But goiter is caused by an extreme iodine deficiency. And you can still be iodine deficient and not have this symptom. So if you want to know more about iodine, its importance, and how to know if you are deficient, keep watching. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name's Kate. I'm a certified health and nutrition coach. I post videos here on YouTube twice a week, talking all things insulin resistance, weight loss, sleep, and more. So if you're ready to take control of your metabolic health, make sure to click that subscribe button. And you can also find me on TikTok and Instagram, where I share new posts every single day. We're gonna start off by talking about what iodine is and its importance. Then we will get into signs of a deficiency and we will finish off talking about how you can get more into your diet and how to supplement if you're not able to get enough in through food. So iodine is an essential mineral that's found in our soil and our ocean waters. In the 1920s, iodine started to be added to our salt because goiter, which is an enlargement of our thyroid gland, was becoming more and more common. And as mentioned earlier, goiter is caused by an extreme iodine deficiency. So yes, this fortification into our food system did help a bit. It was enough to slow down significantly the rates of goiter. But today, a lot of us are still not getting enough. And it's leading to some pretty serious side effects that a lot of us don't realize are connected. Iodine levels are not routinely tested, but it is estimated that one third of people worldwide are either low in iodine or iodine deficient. Now, there are two parts to why this is. Of course, first off, we are not getting enough in through our diet. But second off, there are a lot of toxins in our modern environment that decrease absorption. The biggest one being toxic flame retardants. These flame retardants are mixtures of man-made chemicals that are used to make products less flammable. They are used commonly in plastics, textiles, and electrical equipment. It is estimated that 97% of Americans have these flame retardants in their blood, so it's no wonder that so many of us are iodine deficient. And fluoride is another example of something that a lot of us are exposed to that blocks iodine absorption. So that is a quick summary of what iodine is and why a lot of us are not getting enough of it. Now let's get into nine major symptoms that are iodine deficient. So number one is a swollen neck. We already spoke about this. This is a result of goiter. But again, this is a result of an extreme iodine deficiency and it's very possible to not experience the symptom and still be low in iodine. So some other signs to watch out for are hair loss, dry skin, if you're always feeling cold or you have a slow heartbeat, brain fog and fatigue, sudden weight gain, and for women, if you have an irregular period. So I wanna hear from you. Let me know in the comment section down below if you have any of these symptoms and how many, and did you know that they could be related to iodine? Let me know down below. But other than these side effects, what are some of the more serious consequences of an iodine deficiency? Probably one of the most common results of an iodine deficiency is impaired thyroid function. Iodine levels have fallen over 50% in the last 40 years, and thyroid diseases such as hypothyroidism, Hashimoto's disease, and thyroid cancer have only become more common. And one of the main roles of the thyroid is to regulate our metabolism. Our thyroid is responsible for making two key hormones, T3 and T4. 
It does this by taking iodine from our food and combining it with tyrosine, an amino acid. Without adequate iodine, your thyroid cannot function properly. But it is not just our thyroid that needs iodine. Other tissues and organs in the body require it as well. Low iodine levels have also been associated with breast cancer and cysts in the breasts and ovaries. They are also associated with fibromyalgia and impaired cognitive function. Iodine is important for so, so much, and a lot of us don't even realize we're not getting enough of it. But now, with all the symptoms out of the way, let's talk about why iodized salt isn't enough. Research shows that just 10% of iodine in salt is bioavailable. Combine this with the fact that we've been told to limit our salt consumption, and most people are only getting between 30 to 77 micrograms of iodine a day, which is less than the RDA of 150 micrograms. And we have to remember that the RDA was set at the minimum intake required to prevent goiter, and that this may not even be enough for optimal health. Dr. David Brownstein is a thyroid expert, and he recommends a daily intake much higher than the RDA, between 6 to 50 milligrams per day. So how can you get more iodine in through your diet? Some of the best food sources include kelp, seafood, and dairy. Kelp and seaweed being the most potent source. Now, I know some of you have heard me talk about Grassland Nutrition's beef liver capsules on my channel before. I think this is a fantastic product for people to add beef liver into their diet, but they also have a product that includes kelp. One serve of these beef liver and kelp capsules includes 300 micrograms of iodine, which is a great way to get a jumpstart on your iodine intake for the day. I will put a link to check out this product in the description box down below. Beyond that, egg yolks can be a source of iodine, and also some nuts contain iodine as well. Now, the fact that iodine can be difficult to get in through diet, combined with the fact that we're being exposed to so many of these toxins every day, means that a lot of people will have to supplement further, especially if you're someone who's experiencing a lot of the symptoms we mentioned earlier. Personally, I have been supplementing iodine pretty much daily for the last couple of years, and I'm sorry if this is too much information, but I'm gonna talk about periods for a second. <laughs> One of the biggest benefits I noticed since I started supplementing was that my period became a lot lighter. <laughs> because let me tell you, for as long as I could remember before that, it was super heavy. <laughs> now, prior to supplementing iodine, in the past I had went on the birth control pill and this did help a little bit, but honestly, iodine made the biggest difference. And it also really, really helped with my cramps. So that benefit aside, I also noticed an increase in my energy just throughout the day with it being more consistent. But anyways, if you want to check out the iodine supplement that I use every single day, I'm gonna put the link in the description box down below. Anyways guys, that's all I have for you today. Again, let me know in the comment section down below if you are experiencing any of these symptoms and if you knew they could be related to iodine. I love chatting with you guys in the comment section, so even if you just wanna say hi, I really appreciate that. If you guys did enjoy this video, you might also enjoy my video all about skin tags, what causes them, and how you can get rid of them naturally. You can check that out here. If you wanna catch up on my most recent upload, you can find that here. And if you wanna check out my coaching programs, including my insulin resistance masterclass, you can find those here. Thanks guys, I'll see you next time. Bye.